Data visualization might not sound like the sexiest job for a graphic designer, although it is often required for reports, brochures, and presentations. With the right tool, it is possible to generate effective and beautiful charts. And by the right tool, I don't mean the good old graph tool in Illustrator. Datilon is a robust Illustrator plugin built specifically to design charts with granular control to every aspect of them. In this video, I will show you how I built a report in InDesign with embedded Illustrator charts created with Datilon, and we will also cover some best practices on how to make data look good. This is the final report in InDesign where I have the charts that I created in Illustrator with the Datilon plugin which I'm going to show you in this video. And I just wanted to show you that it will end up in this report in InDesign because there is a beautiful round trip, a completely seamless one, where you work with data coming from spreadsheets tied to an Illustrator file and artboards from that Illustrator file are connected or placed into an InDesign document and everything is seamlessly integrated. So if I update the data in the spreadsheet or replace it with a new spreadsheet, everything will update first in Illustrator, then also in InDesign without me having to do manual changes anywhere. This can be extremely important and save you a lot of time, especially if you work on longer documents or reports. Here I only have two pages, but even here you will already see the advantage of this seamless integration. So to get started, I'm actually going to delete from InDesign this chart and also these here on the left side and jump back into Illustrator where I have these charts prepared, but I'm going to prepare some here on the side just so you can see how everything is built from scratch using the Datilon plugin. Now, once you have the plugin installed, you will see an icon here in the toolbar, the only colorful one, so it's easy to spot it. Once I select that with this, I can create a new chart. And immediately the Datilon editor panel shows up where we can choose the type of chart that we want to work with. You can see lots of categories here. So we have bar, line, area, scatter, pie, heat map, and so on and so forth. Lots of lots of options. But within each category, you have lots of additional visualization options as well. Now, in this case, for this first one, I'm going to choose these lollipops. So I just click select. And by default, it generates some data for me. However, we can manage the data very quickly. Now, in this Illustrator document, I already added the spreadsheet that I wanted to work with, which is an Excel file. And it had the following three sheets, out of which I'm going to first use this one called bar charts. Once I highlight it on the right side, I can see straight away the values coming from it. And all I have to do is to click on select sheet to apply this to my new chart. Now at this point, I probably won't have to see the data anymore, so I can hide that and then we can just collapse this panel a bit. That way we can focus and zoom closer to what we are building. And I have to admit this plugin has a lot of options and it takes some time to get used to where to find things. But after you build a couple of charts, it really all makes sense. So first, I always recommend naming your chart. In this case, I'm just going to call it growth. And as you can see, the plugin already created the binding for the X and the Y axes, but that's not what I want to use. So I am going to change it to different columns from that spreadsheet. So I am going to use instead growth and for the color as well, I will use growth. And immediately we can see that now our chart goes in two directions. So we have zero in the middle and we have the positive changes on the top and the negative changes on the bottom. But to better indicate this, we are going to refine and stylize our chart, which we can achieve under styling. Now, first, I like to go into the position and size options where we have an inner margin under the plot area spacing. So I'm going to just change that to three millimeters. That way, the chart will fill in better the bounding box. But for certain reasons, in case you want to add a legend, it might be worth keeping a larger space around the chart, but still within the bounding box. And then let's jump back into the main categories area under styling where I can just quickly turn off data marks. 
it's like turning on and off layers or live effects in Illustrator. So I can show or hide them very quickly and easily. And instead of having those big circles at the end of the bars, I am going to change the bars slightly. So I would like to add some rounding on them. So this is going to be like a round cap option. I just set up the size for the rounding. And also I'm going to take off the option to round all corners because I would like to keep the edges in the middle straight. There is another very important option here under this category and that is the width. If I change this to 100%, then you can see that these bars fill in completely the space in between them. So compared to this, if I want to nicely separate them from each other, I can maybe just use 20%. Now notice that this percentage is working together with this relative distribution option. If you want to be exact in the sizes of these bars, you can choose absolute. But I would recommend to use relative because that will allow you to be able to change the size of the chart and even the aspect ratio of it as you go along and everything will beautifully update without you seeing anything stretching. So let's jump back to the categories and now I'm going to the X axis where I am going to first of all hide these lines and also I'm going to hide the labels. So these just took off those numbers at the bottom because we will be showing those numbers elsewhere. I don't need them there. However, there is one very important value here and that is the max value for which I'm going to use 15 with which I can control the visible range for the chart. So even if currently the highest number is let's say 9, I still want to show the empty space for 15. And that is a good thing usually when you create charts because you don't want to only show the region or the area where the values show up but also some space around it. It's almost like having negative space in design. That's something you want to include in your charts as well because it helps reading them. And then let's move on to styling the Y axis, which is quite important because that's where we have everything laid out. So first of all, we want to make sure that this is located at zero. So that is that center line, which by default was on the left, but now it moves in the middle. And that really helps to separate these values on the left and the right side. We want to turn on the ticks and grid. But from this we don't need the ticks, instead we just need these grid lines. However, I would like to have these set up as dashed lines. So I'm just going to put in five point dash, similarly to how you would set up strokes in Illustrator. And then further down here we have the labels, which we already see on the chart. But I would like to set this in a different place. So I just used five millimeter offset both horizontally and vertically and change the alignment to the left for the text. So this keeps it nicely to the right of the center line. And then we can of course choose the font. For this chart I am going to work with DIN. In this case let's just choose the Demi version of it. And I will increase the size maybe up to 10. As you can see I can very easily increase decrease values even by using up and down arrows on my keyboard and everything is updating live. Our chart is looking much happier already but let's just finish off by changing a couple of values or attributes here under the last category. So probably visually one of the most important property is the color for the bars. That's something that you can change here and once I click on this there's additional options coming up. Most importantly, I would like to set the center of division between the colors to be zero. And immediately we start to see different colors showing up. But here are loads of options we can choose from. We have the Illustrator swatches. So all the swatches we currently have in this document. We can also use gradients. And in case we are using gradients, we can even make them data driven which will calculate the gradients based on the data. So we will have these two different colors going from left to right. I'm just going to change this a bit so we can see it better. That looks really nice. However, I'm going to use a palette in this case and one that is included in Datilon. And it's not a sequential one, so we would like to use the diverging options. So I'm going to go for one of these, but I will change the number to two. And I think this one will work nicely. 
So you can see that the diverging color palette means that it can divide the colors that are positive and negative in this case. But to be able to see those numbers, we still need to add those labels. So let's turn on the data labels now. And there are the numbers, but they are too small at the moment. So let's just increase their size. I will also set these to 10 and change the font to the same font that we used in the other place. But to make sure that these numbers are showing perfectly and they are not clashing with those dash lines behind them, we can also add some background on them. So let's just turn this option on. And by default, it's set to gray so we can see those little boxes created around them. And this way we can set it up perfectly. So I'm going to use one millimeter padding. I think that works nicely. And now I can change the color to white. And there's only one but very important detail missing that what actually these values mean or what they represent and for that we can quickly put a suffix here the percent sign so now we have everything as percentages and there's only one more thing missing and that is the legend which would explain what we are seeing here but i'm not going to include that because it will make sense once this chart is placed into indesign because that will already be a title explaining that we are looking at the changes of happiness measured in 2010 compared to 2020. so we can see that the happiness increased in these three continents while it decreased in these other continents so now that we built this first chart, I just would like to quickly show you that you can of course build much more complex charts than this. So for instance, here we can see a scatter graph where we actually have three different values visually represented. So we have first of all on the X axis, the locked GDP per capita. On the Y axis, we have the happiness score. So that simply just means that if you want to be happy, then probably the best countries to pick are located somewhere here on the top right corner. And just as an interesting fact, this up here is Finland. And I believe this one at the bottom is Botswana. But notice that besides these two values on the two axes, we also have another property assigned to the size of these little bubbles. And that represents the healthy life expectancy, which is another column from the original spreadsheet. And once again, you can see that the bubbles tend to be larger on the top right corner compared to the ones at the bottom left. And that is the beauty of data visualization, that so much boring data can be turned into something that people can understand. So we can immediately see, although you would expect this to be the case, that the happier you are, usually the longer you live. And before we jump into InDesign, I just wanted to point out that even these elements are tied to the same spreadsheet. And these will also be able to update once I replace it with a new spreadsheet. Because notice that we currently have the 2020 report, but we will be updating it to the 2021 at the end. So all the dates, including the one up here and also the ones down here, will update together with all the data. And having things like this set up in a smart way is not just saving us time, but also make sure that we don't accidentally forget to leave the old dates in our final report, for instance. But we've seen enough of Illustrator, so let's jump back into InDesign. And I'm going to select the right layer, which I have for charts and illustrations. Now I'm going to use the file place command, which is command or control D, and then select the Illustrator file. Now here it's very important to have the show import options turned on, because with that you will be able to choose the artboard that you want to place in. In this case, I'm going to use this and make sure it uses transparent background. That way I can just click and drag and have our chart ready to go. So just so you can see, besides the chart that we built together, here we also have a comparison chart where we can see side by side the 2010 and 2020 values. Essentially, this is the same exact thing what we created up here, just simply visualize differently. And that's again just showing how important it is to choose the right type of visualization for your data to make it digestible and to work in the context that you are presenting it. 
So now that we have placed that in, let's jump to the next page. And once again, I use the same placement with the same file, but this time I'm going to jump to artboard number four, which has our bubble scatter graph or chart. And I'm just going to plunk that in here. And by the way, if I wanted to change things like the legend in this case, I could just jump back to it straight by holding down Alt or Option key and double clicking on it, which brings me back into Illustrator. And here I can make those changes. And since I've set this legend up manually, it's very easy to change it around. So for instance, I can select any of these, start changing attributes around. And obviously that will also update in InDesign straight away. So if I'm just make this thicker, save this, jump back into InDesign, you will see it already updated there. So we have all our charts placed into this report and I kept the coolest thing for last. Let's see how we can update this with the 2021 spreadsheet. So for that, we will have to jump back into Illustrator and then I'm just going to select one of these charts and under the manage data, I will be able to swap the spreadsheet. So I have to make sure I select the right workbook and there is the option to swap it. And I'm going to change to the other Excel file, the data 2021. So once I open that, all the information will update and refresh here in Illustrator. You can see the dates also updated to 2021 and 2011. And maybe I just have to move things around a bit in order to make sure that these are lined up again, how they used to be. And then once I'm happy with how everything looks here in Illustrator, I can save this document. That's Command or Control S. And then jumping back into InDesign, notice how in the links panel, we have exclamation marks for the Illustrator file. And if I just simply double click on that, and now we have the refresh 2021 version of this report. So that was before, completely different data, and this is after. So we can see on the first page, we have the new charts and also the new dates. And also on the second page, everything's updated. And there's one final thing worth mentioning that you can also create templates for Datilon that either you or others in your team will be able to access and use. And the way you can do that is by using the Datilon account panel where you can give your chart a title and some description maybe and even include the fonts that you worked with. And once you're ready, you just have to hit export to Datilon. But since I've already done this, I can just show it to you here in the browser. We have the World Happiness Report right here with all the charts and all the information. And it even stores the attached data or those spreadsheets in the cloud so everyone else can access it as well. And if I want to just create a new design based on this, I can even do it right here in the browser. So you can see I can select any of these charts. I have access to the data and I have access to the same options that we've seen in Illustrator. So by now I'm sure you can see that Datilon definitely is a much more robust tool compared to the graph features in Illustrator. And Datilon is definitely the tool that you want to work with in case you need granular control over all the properties that you can think of in your charts. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.